Well, after much anticipation, today the Coalition released the costings for their ambitious nuclear energy plans. They're promising Australians a permanent, stable, reliable electricity supply for a quarter of the cost of a part-time, made-in-China, weather-dependent, hackable toys. If the modelling is right, well, there's no comparison. Frontier Economics reckon the Coalition's plan to reach net zero will cost $264 billion less than Labor's. But, as they say, the devil is in the detail, and it is Friday the 13th. So, joining me now to go through today's costings is the Director of Energy Research at the Centre for Independent Studies, Aidan Morrison. Aidan, thanks for joining me tonight. First off, we've been waiting a long time for the Coalition to release their costings. We finally have them. What were your initial impressions from their presentation today? It looks like a reasonable um, estimation of the impact that nuclear energy is going to have on the grid. Um, it's been established by lots of other studies overseas that when you add some significant amount of reliable, firm, clean power, that reduces the cost of decarbonising quite substantially. And that's what uh, we've found in this uh, work done today by Frontier Economics. It still does look like a reasonably ambitious uh, program to be able to get to first power in 2036. Uh, that means the coalition will have to get their skates on. There's not a lot of room for them to uh, make any big mistakes. But it certainly seems a lot more plausible than the current government's plan of adding another 88 uh, gigawatts of renewable energy in the next five years, which is absolutely not going to happen. So both parties have ambitious plans, um, uh, but I think that this one does look reasonably credible and it looks like it will lead to a lower cost system overall in the long run. Talk to me just quickly about frontier economics, because obviously the costings are going to be disputed. How reputable are they? And they've done work for the government as well, haven't they? Yes, they do work for the government. They were actually one of the um, participants that were named in the recent review of the integrated system plan, where the government reached out to selected trusted parties to um, to do a review of the integrated system plan. So um, they're very well established, uh, really a, a premier sort of analysis group. And uh, and they've done this kind of very detailed, very expensive modelling, uh, the full system modelling that GenCost's own report suggests is required to get a clearer picture. GenCost acknowledges that their own levelised cost of energy analysis is not a sufficient substitute for this kind of detailed work. So Frontier is a credible outfit. They're used regularly by many industry players in the government, and it looks like they've put some, uh, put some real elbow grease into this one. It's quite a, quite a substantial piece of work now that we've finally got it. Now, you mentioned another issue that will be hotly debated, and that's the time frame. As you said, uh, today's plan assumes nuclear power will be operational by 2036. You said that is realistic, though it leaves little margin for error. The uh, government, of course, are going to dispute this and say it's going to take too long. I think Jason Clare today said it's going to take 20 years, which is very different to 2036. Um, how do we know who's right on that particular argument? Yeah, look, that's a really good question. There's lots of different sources here. I tend to go by the IAEA, that's the International Atomic Energy Agency's Milestones Report. It's a set of basic steps and principles for embarking nations that don't yet have nuclear energy on how to get there. And their recommendation from first policy decision to delivering electrons in the grid is you need to allow 10 to 15 years. I think that is plausible, um, and uh, I don't think that's the best uh, sort of world uh, standard sort of to aim for. So obviously the coalition is aiming for the bottom end of that range. But as we heard at the nuclear energy inquiry uh, conducted by Parliament um, uh, yesterday from Helen Cook, Australia has a number of serious advantages, including quite a well set up regulatory framework for our medical research reactor. We do actually have serious uh, nuclear energy skills and regulatory systems. We're signatories to most of the major treaties. So we're not starting from nearly as much of a cold start as plenty other countries are. So it can always go wrong. Mistakes can be made. It does not mean that we're going to sail home and do this very easily. But there is a plausible path, I believe, uh, if, if the government does, or if the opposition, should they form government, gets their skates on, gets the support of at least one major state government and, uh, and doesn't make any uh, bad mistakes and follows the very best practice from international recommendations on how to get nuclear built.